Are we starting? Yeah, it's going. Yep. All right. Um, so we're going to talk about chemical bonding now. And this is my buddy Jason here. We have a bond <laughs> as well. And we're going to talk about different types of bonds. So if you look in your notes, you can see that the reason that you got atoms that are trying to form chemical bonds is to become stable and fill that octet rule. Oct. What uh -huh. number does that have to do with? Eight. Oh, my God. He teaches math, so whatever. Um, so anyway, they're going to try and get eight electrons in their outermost shell. Now, there's a couple exceptions to that, and we'll talk about that later. So the first type of bond we're going to talk about is an ionic bond. And so that's usually going to happen with these atoms that you see here on the left side of the peri periodic table and the ones you see on the right side. Now, we've already kind of talked about orbitals and how those work. So I'm really going to throw one at you here. If we talk about lithium here, and it's got an atomic number of three, mm -hmm. how many electrons do you think it has? Three? Yes! <laughs> How many does it have in its outermost shell? One? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Star student. OK. Now, let's go over um, why that is. I should have kept that up to draw on, but that's OK. So in the innermost shell, you've got two electrons, and then you're going to have that third one on the outside, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we said we want that octet rule, right? So do you think that lithium is going to waste all that time and energy to go all around and find these atoms to steal Eight or seven more electrons to get eight? Yeah. You do? It needs seven to get make eight? It does. But yeah. is then it does that sound like a lot of work? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what I call these ones on the left side of the periodic table, they're the wimps of the periodic table. Because, well, they're kind of lazy too. They're like, I'm not gonna go around and find seven. So what they'll do is they'll let that last electron that's on their outermost shell go. Uh, and someone else yeah, is gonna yeah. take it. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Okay, so something that's only got maybe seven on the outside will need one to make eight. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you think of anyone on here that would be in that situation? Well, I find it's this is one. We've got, <laughs> Billy's got two on the outside, so boron's got five, uh, four carbon. Five, 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 two, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven. Anything like fluorine or chlorine? Yes. It's like. I'll count on seven on Yeah. Okay. And if you guys remember earlier, I had you do on your periodic tables where you wrote Roman numerals on the top here, right? So there was a Roman numeral one here, Roman numeral two, and that had to do with how many electrons they had in their outermost shell, right? So over here, we would be in group seven, and you can see that they're going to have seven in their outermost shell, right? Because if you look at fluorine, it has how many electrons total? Nine. Nine. Very good. And so that means it's going to have two in the innermost shell and then seven on the outermost shell. So for it to find one more electron is not that big of a deal. So what it's going to do is it's going to be a bully, uh -huh. and it's going to steal electrons from one of these guys, right? So one common situation you see is sodium, which has 11 total electrons, and chlorine. They like to join together. Do you know what they form? Salt. Yes, they do. I He's do like a, a salty salt. old dog, right? Um, so yeah, that's what that's going to form. So let's think about how that actually works, right? So we've got sodium that has 11 electrons. So in its innermost shell, it's going to have how many? Two again. Two. And in the next shell? <laughs> eight. Eight. Uh -huh, I see it, because it's a full shell. Right. I see it's a full shell. Right, yeah, so okay. two and eight is how much? 10. 10, so we said 11. So that's one on the outside so again. So one on the outside, okay, yeah, right? Yeah. And that makes sense because it's in this column. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is it's going to give that one away because okay, it's yeah. easier. That's why you usually see Na written Na+. plus. Because right? it's lost an electron, so it becomes positive. Right, okay, because yeah, remember yeah. electrons are negative, and so if you lose one, you become more positive. Yeah. That's a weird thing to think about, and we'll talk about that and do an activity on that. Okay, so then we've got chlorine over here, and chlorine's going to have how many in the innermost shell? Two. Two, and then and, the next and one? Eight. Eight. That's ten, and then seven. Again, then seven, seven. Like, like fluorine had. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so what's going to happen is it's going to take that electron from sodium that sodium's really willing to give away. Mm -hmm. And so if it gains another electron, it's going to become positive or negative? Negative. Negative, because yeah. electrons are negative, mm -hmm. right? And so what's going to happen is these two are going to be attracted because, as we know, the rules of attraction apply to chemistry. Opposites attract, right? Opposites uh -huh, attract, uh -huh. see? And so what's going to happen is the sodium and the chlorine are going to come together because positive and negative like each other, OK? Now, there's one other important thing about ionic bonding is, so we said that sodium is going to have a positive charge, right? Yeah. Is it going to be positive 2, positive 3, or positive 1, or just what? Po just positive 1. 
positive one. Yeah, why? Because so it tends to less one electron. Well, okay, okay, right. And then if we look at chlorine, how many did that gain? Okay, so the last gained one electron, so that's Cl, like Cl minus, right? One minus, one negative. Right, one. minus one. So we've got a plus one being attracted to a minus one. Mm -hmm. So do you notice anything about the charges? Neutral. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. So when they come together, they'll equal zero, right? Plus one and minus one equals zero. Uh huh. Does that make sense? Fantastic. I know. And it's almost like they arranged this, this periodic table this why, on purpose. Is this why salt's so tasty? Yes. <laughs> wow. Star student. OK. So that's going to be ionic bonding. So I have a picture of what we were just talking about here, right? So you can see how sodium has that. Uh -huh. um, one electron on the outermost shell, so it gives it to chlorine. Now sodium has that positive charge. Chlorine has a negative charge. They have equal opposing charges, and so they're going to be attracted to each other. So that's how an ionic bond works. Wow. Yeah, cool, <laughs> huh? All right, we're done.